Okay guys, so we're moving on to 3.2. This is a area question, area and perimeter, right? So it's a great one to practice before Monday's exam. So it says Annex to E shows the floor plan of a rectangular room that Lizette wants to add to her property. The room will have a roof and a ceiling with cornices, okay? So it says some other information, the exterior measurements of the room, right? It's important when it says exterior, right? Because remember, when you have a room, right? The walls are still, like, there's a thickness to the walls. So if I'm looking at the outside, right, it's going to be different to what the thickness is when we're looking at the inside, okay? And I'll talk to that a bit more as we continue. The walls have a uniform thickness, right? It tells us how thick the walls are. So all in millimeters, right? So there's probably going to be a bit of converting we have to do. The ceiling boards only cover the internal area of the ceiling of the room. That's important. Cornices will be placed between the walls and the ceiling right around the ceiling of the room. So the cornices are inside, right? Around the interior um, of the room at the top. Um, and then it says, you may use the following formulas. So they've given us quite a bunch of information. Let's just look at the annexure. Okay, so this is the room. Remember, this is the thickness of the wall, which is 220 millimeters. And that thickness is all around. Okay, I'm just going to put that there. Okay, let's now see what they're asking us. So 3.2.1 says calculate in meters squared. They have told us the format that we must put our answer. The floor area of the room. Okay, so it's talking about the floor, right? So the floor area is going to be the same as the area of the ceiling, but internal, right? The internal area of the ceiling will be the same as the floor, okay? So basically what we need to do is we need to take each of these measurements, okay, these external measurements, subtract the thickness of the wall, and then we can get the area of the floor, okay? So let's just write 3.2.1. So I'm just going to talk about the length. So the exterior length, and I'm putting it like that, right, equals 5 to 4, 0 millimeters, right? That's the whole way across. But if we only want the interior length, we have to subtract the wall length here and the wall length here, right? So we're going to say the length interior is going to be 5 to 4, 0 minus 220 minus 220, okay? Put that into our calculator. Uh, not divide, minus 220, minus 220. Okay, so the interior length is going to be this. Okay, let's now look at the width. So the width for the exterior is 440. I mean, 40, 40, sorry, 40, 40 millimeters. Okay, and then the width of the interior is going to be those 440 meters, but here it's going to be subtraction, subtract, we're going to have to subtract the thickness of the wall on that side and the thickness of the wall on that side. So again, we subtract the 220, two 220s from that, okay? So that, those are the internal um, length and width, right, that we need to calculate the area, okay? But it says calculate the area in meters squared. So before we calculate the area using the millimeters, let's convert both of these into meters before we use this area of the rectangle formula. So how do we convert millimeters into meters, right? So we say, okay, that's millimeters. I'm gonna divide by 10 to get into centimeters. Then I divide it by 100 to get into meters, okay? So that's 4.8 meters, okay? Your conversions between different measurements, you must be very comfortable with these, right? If you're like looking at this and you're like, Marks, I have no idea what you're saying, please go and look those up and learn them because they don't give them to you in the exam, okay? So I'm dividing by 10 to get into centimeters, dividing by 100 to get into meters. Okay, so now we've got our length and our width. Let's use this formula they've given us, right? Area equals length times width, which equals 4.8 times 3.6. And let's see what that is. Okay. And that is 17.28 watt meters squared. If you do not put your units, guys, you will lose marks. Do not forget units. It's like the worst thing to lose marks over, okay? So that's that first question. 
let's now go on to the next question. So it says, the dimensions of each of the ceiling boards are, she intends on using is this. Determine showing all calculations whether a minimum of seven ceiling bar boards would be needed for this room. Okay, so we're basically saying, if this is the, the dimensions of the ceiling boards, how many do we need to cover this um, area? Now you could be saying, but Margs, that's the area of the floor. But remember what I said, I said the area of the floor is the same as the area of the ceiling. So we actually have both in calculating that number. Okay, so I'm going to say the ceiling board, right? The ceiling board dimensions, the length is this and the width is this. Okay, let's convert both of these into meters, right? Oh, sorry, into meters. The reason I want to convert it into meters is because then we can calculate this meter squared, right? The area of one board and compare it to the area of the ceiling to figure out how many ceiling boards we actually need. Okay, so again, we say 2400 zero, zero, divided by 10 to get into centimeters, divided by 100 to get it into meters. Perfect. Let's now do... The same thing for the 900 divided by 10 centimeters divided by 100 to get it into meters. Okay, so the area of a ceiling board, ooh, ceiling board equals length times width, which equals 2.4 times 0 0.9, 2.4 times 0 0.9, which is 2.4. 1, 6 meters squared, right? So each ceiling board is this in area. Now let's figure out how many ceiling boards we need for the full area of the ceiling, okay? So we say area of the ceiling divided by the area of a board because that will tell us how many we need. So we say 17.28, which is what we worked out previously, over 2.16, okay? Uh, put that into your calculator making sure you type that in correctly. And we see we need eight, right? We need eight, eight boards, okay? What did the question ask us? It said, determine showing all calculations whether a minimum of seven ceiling boards would be needed for this room. So we say, no, seven is too few, okay? I know I say this a lot, but remember with these questions, once you do the maths, comment on the scenario. Be like, yeah, the scenario is right. Or no, the scenario is wrong. Okay, it's important because you get a mark for that commentary. Okay, let's now move on to the next question. 3.2.3. So it says calculate in millimeters. Okay, that's important because they've now told us we've been working in meters this whole time, but it says in millimeters. The exact length, okay, of cornices needed for this room. Okay, so basically what we're gonna be doing, and this like sounds a little bit tricky, but it's not really. We're basically saying the cornices go around the interior, right, of the whole room. So even if there's a window or a door, remember the cornices are on the ceiling, so you need them regardless of what's on the walls, okay? So it's the interior. So what are we actually looking at here? What we're looking at is perimeter. It's perimeter of this interior, um, ceiling right so we know that this interior ceiling right we know that these were the dimensions we worked this out in the first question didn't we i hope i'm putting these <laughs> these dimensions in right i can't remember if i'm right yeah i am right um and this whole thing here is also so we're basically working out perimeter okay so it's important to realize what we're working out so let's say so we're saying the perimeter of the ceiling equals 4800 plus 4800. Remember, I'm doing keeping this in millimeters, right? Even though we converted it to meters before, they've asked us to give our answer here in millimeters. So let's indulge them and give them what they want. Okay. And it is 16,800 millimeters. Okay. It's literally just perimeter. Okay, it's important to recognize what is being asked, okay? Remember here, because we're not multiplying any of the dimensions by each other, we don't put any squares or cubes or anything like that. It's literally distance, it's millimeters, okay? 
Now we are moving on to our last question. Okay, it says, Table five below shows the price list of materials that can be used. Okay, so there's ceiling boards with two different lengths, but remember it says that she intended to use this version, right? So we're not actually interested about that one because she's not buying that one. She's buying this one. Okay, so they're trying to trick you here. Don't, don't fall for it, okay? Then we have the decorative molding. So there's basically the cornices, right? And we can see that they're this length and that's how much they cost, okay? So then it says determine, state, uh, Lizette stated, um, the total cost of the materials, including VAT, right? Important, right? It tells us here that these, these prices include VAT. So it's basically, we don't have to do any VAT calculations. So don't panic, right? Because they've done it for us. Would be less than 1,250. Okay, so let's calculate how much it's going to cost her. So what we need to first do is we need to say, well, how many ceiling boards is she going to buy? And how many corners lengths is she going to buy? Well, we've already calculated that she's going to need eight ceiling boards, right? We did that over here, right? So we know she needs eight ceiling boards, right? So we say eight times by the price of one ceiling board, which is 91.44, okay? Eight times 91.44. So that is this much. Remember to put your round sign in. But how many cornices is she going to need, right? Well, we know that the perimeter, right, that the cornices are going to have to cover is the 16,800. So we can say, well, we know that she needs this much, right, in order to put all the cornices into this room. But each corner only covers 2,000, right? So let's figure out how many she needs. So she needs 8.4 cornices, right? But she can't buy 0.4 of a cornice, okay? So she's actually going to have to buy 9 cornices. Does that make sense? Okay, you can't just go into the shop and be like, hey, I only need this much. Will you please just decant it for me or whatever, or cut it to this length, right? She has to buy nine. So she has to find, buy nine cornices, right? Let me make sure you can see what I'm doing. So that's going to be nine times the price of a cornice, which is 53.64. Okay, let's put that into our calculator. So that's 482.76, okay? So the total cost is going to be the cost of the cornices plus the cost of the ceiling boards. So let's add those together. And it's gonna cost her 1214.28, okay? So that's how much it's gonna cost her. We've worked out how much it's gonna cost her. Have we answered the question? It said, verify showing all calculations whether her statement is correct. What was her statement? She said it would cost her less than 1,250. Well, we know that that is now correct based on our calculations. Okay, so there's a really good question to practice because there's some fractions, there's a lot of converting, there's a bit of finance in there, but it's a great question. Okay, let's now move on to 3.3. .3.